Every studio needs a studio cat. You're my studio cat. Oh. Okay. What is producing in the box? Well, to understand that, we're going to need to know what producing out of the box is. And to know that, we're going to have to go all the way back to the very first recording of music known to man in 1888. The first ever recording was a recording of Arthur Sullivan's song, The Lost Chord, and it was etched into an Edison phonograph cylinder. Sullivan was kind of blown away at this technology, but he was also a little hesitant as well. He said, I can only say that I am astonished and somewhat terrified at the result of this evening's experiments. Astonished at the wonderful power you have developed and terrified at the thought of so much hideous and bad music may be put on record forever. Let's skip forward to 1937, and that was the invention of the very first compressor. It was called the Western Electric 110 Limiting Amplifier, and what it was for was it was for people that were on radio, um, and what they had to do is they had to come in and out of their microphone constantly to adjust the volume themselves, and if they were too loud, like the signal could cut out entirely. So this was revolutionary technology for them. It later became adopted into music studios and things like that to limit how loud something could get into a microphone. It was very, very simple. It had basically just two adjustments and that was it. Now let's skip all the way to 1968. And this is where we get into multi-track recording. Everybody was pretty used to four track recording by this time, but the Beatles really wanted um, the ability to record more than four tracks. And Abbey Rhodes was somewhat slow in adopting the new technology. So the Beatles started traveling to other studios in London for the new eight track recorders. And this blew people's minds. And this is probably one of the main reasons why the Beatles are as popular as they are, because they revolutionized how we listen to music. And eight tracks blew people's minds back then. As time went on, track counts got higher and higher and higher, and tons of other companies were starting to make all of this really, really cool gear. People were making EQs and more compressors. People were making different kinds of channel strips and preamps and microphones, and the industry was really changing and changing for the better. But with that came a cost. And it was a very, very high cost. And that's why if you wanted your music recorded, you had to go to a studio to get it done. And not only was it super expensive, but there were only really a few studios around that could get high quality style music that you hear on the radio. Now let's skip to 1977. A company called Soundstream created a digital editing system in 1977. And it wasn't until 1989 that DigiDesign released Sound Tools which is the predecessor and the base for Pro Tools. And so on January 20th, 1989, the industry was changed for forever. Pro Tools was born and quickly became the industry standard. This absolutely changed everything because now you can record music inside of a computer and with about as many tracks as you wanted as many as your computer could handle. Music can now be recorded at home and without gatekeepers. Music was democratized. Music creation was democratized. By 1991, companies started making plugins, which were at the time mainly used for photo manipulation. Um, you know, things like Photoshop and things like that. But in 1992, Waves Audio came out with the first plugin called the Q10 parametric EQ. And that started a new revolution for recording music because now music could also be edited and mixed inside of your computer. The technology was limiting at the time and that's why a lot of people still used outboard gear because they had to in order to get decent sounding recordings into their computer. Now let's skip forward to March 29th. 2019. Billie Eilish and her brother released a brand new record called When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? And it was completely made in their bedroom on a computer, completely in the box. They tracked it in Logic Pro, mainly using virtual instruments as well as some vocals. And the outboard gear consisted of only a UAD Apollo interface and some Yamaha monitors. And that was it. Phineas and Billy mixed the album by themselves. And Phineas won Best Engineered Album, Non-Classical, 
on Grammy night. This has changed everything. There is no more need for outboard gear. We are getting incredible sounding music, incredible sounding recordings, and it's being mixed on a laptop and a pair of headphones. And it's being released and people are winning Grammys with this. We are at a new age of music creation and that is why I started this channel. So now we've gotten all the way through this video and you're probably asking yourself, okay, now I understand what producing in the box is. Now what is the producing in the box YouTube channel? Well, that started in October 18th of 2021. A man who was frustrated that his friends weren't releasing their incredible music and it was because of fear. They took fear and threw it into excuses like, well, I don't have the proper gear to record my music. Or until I hear a Grammy award winning producer use this stuff, then it's not good enough for my music. Well, guess what? Here's your in the box Grammy award. Here's all the tools you need at the most affordable price in the history of ever. So here is a YouTube channel dedicated to teaching and empowering you to make your own music completely in the box with what you have. So what is the Producing in the Box YouTube channel? It is your excuse to now start making music and releasing it yourself. Now friend, as always, go create.